workers at the Blackwood Babe Ruth organization that uh, assisted in uh, giving a piece of land to that complex. And I have seen just a boatload of money go on down to that complex. The thing that comes to mind was, if I remember correctly, it was about $800,000 that was introduced here before council to uh, make some improvements down there. Do you recall what that total bill wound up being from the 800 it started at? Or what, right? Uh, putting in a new rink and a new concession stand. I think the final number, Ray, if anybody can correct me if I'm wrong, was about 1.9 yeah. million. More than uh, twice the amount introduced. Yeah, and that was to uh, put in the, the total amount of rinks. That may have started out with less. We, I think we thought about tearing down the one rink and, but we didn't, we kept it and just refurbished it, did the rest of it. Um, I, I don't have to tell you that I'm all about sports and youth sports and doing what's right for the kids, making it as safe as we can for the kids. Uh, inevitably, it's the parents that pay. I don't know that it is a common sense idea to spend any kind of money because let's just take the past to indicate what may be the future. What is going to be introduced and what's truly going to be spent is, uh, I just don't see it coming in at anywhere near the numbers that they, you're hoping that they are. It just isn't feasible. I don't know That's that it's... We'll, we'll, right when they, when they go out, they'll we'll do the pricing and again, they'll come before council to workshop and we will discuss all that. This is just the design to get all the information. Oh, and, and the thing with open space, uh, money going to that, I mean, we seem to spend money <laughs> and I come from Philadelphia and spent since here from 1992. This open space thing just sometimes seems laughable. It really does. You're going to pay money to do nothing with something. Open space, it's justified. But when you do something with open space and you have the money for it, you're borrowing. Once again, here comes a brand new credit card in the mail, swipe it and we're going to spend money again. We're not going to spend money, we're actually going to put it off. And I'm going to pay for it with other money. Eventually, it's you know, it builds and builds and builds. There's there's a you know sack of statements sitting in the office, and we're going to pay those bills. Maybe it's not the right time now to go ahead and spend that kind of money. It, every year we find something new to spend it on. If it's about safety, you got to do it. If it's about you know protecting the people of Gloucester Township. You got to do it. But spending just for the sake of spending, if you don't have it, maybe it's not the time like we do at our homes. If you don't have the money for it, you don't do it. You just don't do it. And if I may, on the uh, comment on uh, the redevelopment, that I understand uh, Mr. Lechner, that he was reciting 1989's, the whole township was deemed redevelopment, what? That was, uh, what? Was that 99? I think it was 1989, the rehabilitation area. Okay. Is that what you're quoting as more bringing this to date as to what's going on with, with what you're doing? Were you citing that from 1989? Uh, I was citing the ordinance that allows the town to do a redevelopment plan in this particular area. Do you think that things have changed enough since 1989 that could be revisited? We redevelop everything. Whenever the township wants to do something, we, we throw our anchor there and we call it redevelopment. But we're, we constantly do that as a result of what we're looking from 1989. Okay. It almost, I apologize, it's almost like a comedian coming back to say beginning of the joke. We redevelop, redevelop, redevelop. We go back to doing nothing and it's deemed open space. So we gotta pay for open space to do nothing. It, it just keeps running circles. And if you keep on going back to that, what you got from 1989, and a lot's going on. People that left here in 1990 come back to Gloucester Township. It looks a lot different. A lot of redevelopment has happened. Maybe it's time to leave some of it alone. Just let it be. Because we're not, we're, we're, I don't see where we're getting much tax revenue from, you know. I think what he's, he's saying, correct. Private property, so, I mean, first of all, it's 
but still. No. In, in any event, um, you know, one of the other things that um, Linda Mosser said about, you know, could we look at the potholes? We may have a good crew that's working on the potholes. We don't know the county does. Could you look at those holes that are on some of these roads? That truly is open space. Thanks. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Council, Jen O'Donnell, Ariel. How many fields are in that Gloucester Township Park? Do you know? Off the top of my head, I do not. I know there's definitely four soccer fields, and I know there is one football field, and there's a practice field off to the side, but I, to tell you the total number, I don't really And a lacrosse field. At maybe $600,000 each? Is that what you were saying? That was what, uh, what we've been told is possibly the cost of putting an artificial surface on one of those fields. And what is the cost of just maintaining the fields that are there every year? Grass seed, cutting, those kinds of things. I don't have that number for you. However, I can tell you those fields are a wreck after one season. And that's the problem, especially football. It just takes a, a toll. Um, so, a couple months ago, my husband and, wa and I watched something on, I want to say it was 2020, one of those goofy shows, um, and it was about the AstroTurf and the little sediment, pebbly things that are in there, and the high rate of cancer in soccer goalies in colleges. So I'd like you to take a look at that maybe before you decide to do that. Awesome, thanks. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Wendy Williams, Blackwood. Um, I just kind of want to piggyback on what everybody else said about this AstroTurf. Um, I'm coming into this blind. I'm not really sure what's going on. But say we have approximately 10 fields, and you want to do two, I guess kind of as a pilot to see what happens. Like, how long are you going to assess whether or not these two are working out better than natural grass? Well, we're not, we're not doing it as a pilot. Well, for lack of a better word. Right, so we went to other townships like Cherry Hill, Voorhees, other townships that have been using uh, artificial surfaces for a pretty good amount of time, almost 10 years in, in some of these areas, and, and got some information from them, what they went, went well, what didn't go so well, um, and, and hence we then made a decision, is this something that we want to do? So we uh, talked about it, like I said, about 10 years ago. It was pretty expensive compared to what, what the regular field is. The costs have come down. The fact that we have fields with lights that don't need all that, um, the amount of irrigation that it takes to, to keep these fields going. So we, we looked at all that. And so we asked our uh, recreation engineer to take a look at it, design it, let's see what the dollars would be, and, and we'll go from there. So going from there, meaning if it's if it seems to be working out, you would want to progress and do the other fields. Yes, sir. I don't. I, I think in that park too is probably the maximum we want to put in there. I don't think we want to change all the other fields now. Well, then why do you want to change just the two? I'm confused. Because there's first of all they're side by side, and so you'll get maximum. Uh, space maximum coverage um, second uh, the football field is something that gets torn up really really bad and soccer isn't as bad on them but it is uh, tough we're having more other sports like field hockey and lacrosse that could possibly use those fields as well so we're getting more um, use out of those fields uh, than just football and soccer Okay, but if you have a sports team that is playing, you say football's on it one week and then you have lacrosse on it the next week, there's no consistency within that sport of playing on the same um, underground, that same footing. Mm -hmm. No, it's the same. So grass and AstroTurf are the same? Oh, no. Grass is different, but you can have multiple teams, multiple sports play on AstroTurf field. Right, but if one field is being taken, and like I said, I'm, I'm new to this, so just bear with me. Yeah. If you have them 
you know, if it's allotted for football this week and then the next week the actual turf is allotted for soccer or whatever, and then the, the other weeks they're playing on regular grass. They could play on multiple surfaces. What is, is that going to hinder our children as far as, you know, their performances and... Well, I can tell you now, you have a lot of high schools that have uh, AstroTurf field. Some, even baseball, have the AstroTurf infield with the grass outfield. Um, not even dirt, they're sliding on these AstroTurf fields. That is what they do. Eastern High School is one. Uh, I know Washington Township, Haddon Township, they all have them. Uh, so they're playing on multiple uh, surfaces as we speak. Some don't always play on the varsity or the main field. They'll play on a grass field or a dirt field, and in, case, in some cases, baseball or softball. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Right? Thank you, Josh. Again, Ray Paldor, Ariel, just a real quick question. Um, does Gloucester Township have, uh, or have they ever addressed a buy an American, buy American clause at any time in the past and maintain that? Put that in our bids, to be honest with you, I just can answer that right now. Okay, but for the most part, I mean, you would recognize that as bids had gone out previous that we tried to focus on buy American, right? I'll look for that answer at the next meeting. Do you know where the majority of the uh, artificial turf and astro turf is made? Not in this country. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Linda? Just a quick question on one of the uh, liquor licenses. Sure. The, um, Blenheim Athletic Association, is that, what is, what organization is that? Is that baseball, football, what is, Stallions. pardon me? Stallions, GT Stallions, but it's football, off Clement Avenue. That's the Blenheim? Blenheim, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, so it's their clubhouse? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Have they always had a liquor license there? Yes. Okay. Many, many years. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing no other hands, we close the first public portion. <coughs> bid report? Motion to accept the bid report? Yeah. On the question? Roll call?
need a motion to place uh, resolution 216 on hold. I'll make that motion. On the question, have a roll call. Yes to hold 216. Yes. Yes to hold 216. Yes. Now I'm going to ask council if there's anyone that wants to remove any of these uh, resolutions, please let me know now. If not, do I have a motion to approve this consent agenda for liquor license? On the question, roll call, please. Yes. 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 We now have the regular consent agenda. Any council person wish to remove any of these resolutions, please let me know now. I'll make that motion uh, to approve as is. I'll second that. On the question, roll call, please. Yes. 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 This resolution will allow the township to utilize the Gloucester Township Avenue Pays uh, Emergency uh, Services contract with R.T. Zoli. Motion to approve. So, second. On the question, roll call please. Richardson? Yes. 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 states this will allow the township to purchase a tractor backhoe through the Middlesex Regional Educational Services Commission. Motion to adopt. Okay. On the question, roll call please. Yes. 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 I do have a uh, GTE Gov access question. Oh, I'm sorry. Resolution 
question? Roll call. Yes. 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 Now I go to GT, EGOV, question. This is uh, from a Carla Schroeder. It's 56 Lincoln Drive, Laurel Springs, New Jersey, 08021. I would like to commend Gloucester Township Police Department and the Gloucester Township Public Works Department for their prompt and efficient response to the recent storm. On the days immediately following the storm, I saw police officers directing traffic at many intersections where traffic lights were out and I saw many trucks removing brush and debris from streets. Having a place to deposit spoiled food was enormously helpful. Gloucester Township's response to the storm was far, far superior to the response of some other towns. And I want to thank those who work so hard to ensure the safety and comfort of residents. Chief, if you could pass that along to your uh, staff and if we could do that to Public Works, I'd appreciate that. Now I have a second public portion. I wish to speak on any subject. Please raise your hand and come to the microphone. Yes, Jim. Jim Kibbles, this Ariel. Uh, just to follow up, a uh, couple of questions on open space. Um, I was just curious, what is the percentage um, of the current income, you know, like the yearly taxes that we receive, compared to how much of that money goes towards reducing the uh, debt service for open space projects? Off the top of my head, I, I don't know. Would you know that, Chrissy? And if not, could you get us that information? Oh, we have a You had mentioned earlier that we bring in 800,000. I know we have the hockey rink and one other, and we're now talking maybe another 1.2 million, uh, just to make sure that we don't go over. Is there a percentage that the state or the creditors go and say, if your debt service is like 30% of your income, your credit rating goes down? It's not separate, like just for. Not just for the state, for all your debt. All of it. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Anyone else? Pete? Yeah, I'm Pete Bowman. I'm Chief Financial Officer with Gloucester Township Police Department. Um, I just wanted to thank you for your response to the recent storm. Um, I think that was very helpful. Um, I think that you guys did a very good job of the state 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 of the we council has received nothing. I don't know if there's anything else out there. So we have not received anything. We, the council, right. don't know if the town has. Okay. Um, the 2014 audited financial statements. Uh, it, the, the audited financial statement. When it's when the audit is completed, we usually upload the we'll download the the document to the website. I haven't seen 2014's audited financial statement. That's ready. Uh, It's not complete until they, the auditors get that information and then sign, yeah, sign off from the audit. Okay. 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 Um, another financial document. For the first time, I saw a, uh, a 2015, what is titled a user friendly budget. It's a different document than the other budget documents are, that are given every year. It shows a little bit different information, like employee headcounts. And, some good some good information um, but the first time I've ever seen it was on, on our website it was 2015 is that a, is that a brand new document it is just 2015 is the first one okay this school districts have been providing that for for as long as I 
No, but I guess it's new for municipalities. Huh? Okay. Thank you. Um, this is a, a different topic now. The, the planning board has an interesting meeting tomorrow where they're going to hear about this new, the new rehab center. I guess they, the, I guess the center abandoned their application to, to rezone the area to put housing at the, uh, at the property there. Instead, they're going straight to the planning board with their plans for this uh, institutional facility. And it's a interesting project. I mean, it's, it's, to me, it sounds like it's going to be a little bit of a tough call for the planning board, but we'll, we'll see what they come up with. My question is more general with the planning board. What, what, is, their, what is the planning board's duty? Is it just to make sure the plans comply or you know, meet code and comply with ordinances or things like that? Or is it make sure it's for the good of the town also? Is that part of their charge? Uh, I don't know. Ken, do you want to weigh in on that one before I address the legal issues? Well, how many hours do you have? Interesting. Well, yeah, it does. And that's interesting. That's the first time I heard that. Well, basically, the things that are, that are permitted uses and the applicant is willing to comply with all the requirements of our ordinance, our local uh, planning and actor, we call that a by right application. If an applicant is willing to do whatever our ordinance requires, the planning board must approve it. You know, we wrote an ordinance, we said this is what you want, want to do. So is there any assessment done by the planning board or any other board um, on the law enforcement impact or the school's impact? That's, that's, part, of, that's part of the planning board, no? residential development there would be a school impact is it, or I'm, I guess I should ask the question is that question similar to this at a prior meeting specifically about school impacts and things like that and I thought I received an answer at that when I asked that question that yes the planning board would assess other impacts besides just I, I guess they could if they wanted to 